This is Brad Caleb. My full name is Robert Solifeld, a.k.a. Brad Caleb, Ph.D. And my Ph.D. stands for Post Hole Digger because I earned my degree going through the desert, the university desert. And I tell you, there is only one way of learning things so that you never, ever will forget them. And that is simply going the hard way. But there is another way that you can learn. You don't know how to go about certain things. Then you don't have to go and fall flat on your face. You can listen to some people. People that have gone the road before. People that know how to avoid disasters. And one of those issues that we're dealing with today is the definition of a scientific. We are basing it on a scientific discovery. And what that simply means is what the science or the scientists have discovered yesterday and the day before, or like what we are facing right now during this COVID-19 pandemic, it is a new virus. So people base their discoveries based on, for instance, the 600 kids that were together and so many kids from six to 10 and so many. Lake Placid where all these kids were taken. So Sean, first of all, good morning. What do we know so far? So Rob, this all started on Wednesday when some of the kids began getting sick, but it wasn't until Thursday when one of those kids passed out that health officials realized this may be more serious than originally thought. In total, 33 kids between the ages of eight and 15 and three adults were taken to two local hospitals with this mysterious illness. The symptoms were nausea, vomiting and headaches. The good news is it appears they will all be okay. There was nausea, vomiting, uh, some had headaches, and then, of course, the one that had passed out that prompted the 911 call. Now, the camp where they got sick, Camp Cloverleaf, is a 4-H camp here in Lake Placid, Florida. They started out with 115 campers from all over the state. They are now down to just 50 campers after the illness and some parents deciding to pick up their children early. The camp has blocked off an area that the majority of the kids became sick and they are planning on remaining open. We reached out to them, but they did not get back to us for a comment. Uh, they are expecting everyone to be okay. We want to reiterate this. The question is now is what is and what was that mysterious illness? We hope to get that answer for you later this morning. From 12 till 14 and so many kids from 15 till 18 got infected in a very short little time, less than a week together. Those are scientific discoveries. And based on that, they make a decision what it will be for the next 10, 14 days or maybe 10 months. We don't know for sure. Because as they are discovering things, it becomes a new normal. So are we going to base our new normal on scientific discoveries or are we going to base it on something else? And what that is going to be, we will discuss. What are the discoveries of the old days? In the old days, it was very simple. They had a instruction book and some people know it as the instruction before leaving earth, the Bible. I know it is no longer very popular to talk about the Bible because it's stupid, it's old, it doesn't exist, a blah, 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 blah. But you know, those are your interpretations based on a very small amount of knowledge. So I dare to challenge you on this aspect that we're going back to the old basics, then and today, then and now. How did you look or how did your father, or how did your grandfather uh, fought in Second World War II, uh, possibly second, uh, the First World War? world war how did they act when they were facing the impossible the family was about to be destroyed the enemy was coming in what did they do the power of scientific discovery if we are smart we listen to what other people have discovered that are trained and understand what the concept is that they're dealing with however a lot of those discoveries are based on 
what our eyes only see. See, we have a couple of gates that we interpret information. One of them is the mouth. One of them is the nose. One of them are the eyes and the ears and sometimes our skin. You know why? Because we are hurting when someone pinches us, when we burn our hands on the stove. We know that it's hot. Those are signs for us. And we interpret that internally in our mind. And we say, uh oh, I've got my lesson learned today. Now let's go back to the scientific discovery. Because science discovered over the last couple of weeks that 600 kids in the United States got together. And they still got all affected with the coronavirus. Kids from 6 to 10 years old were about 50% affected between 10 and 15 and then 16 to 18. They all had a high percentage of affection. Several of the people that were guarding and were the teachers, etc., and, and co-workers, they were sent home already because they got sick. But they have a scientific discovery that a group of 600 children could get affected by it. That is what we call a scientific discovery. Let's take a look at what the old folks, our fathers, our grandfathers, and their forefathers, how they acted when they were facing a major disaster that could wipe out the whole generation. See, when I go back to the old days, I must admit, I've had the chance to travel a lot. I've been around the world a couple of times. I think about five or six times I had a chance. I was an, a merchant marine. I started traveling when I was young. I had an opportunity to travel with a youth group. And we went to Spain, to France, to Germany, then Sweden, and Norway. And eventually I traveled actually all over the world as a merchant marine because we were shipped out to United States, South America, and uh, I, of course, Canada, I was there as well. And I ended up in Russia, Thailand, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, beautiful countries, beautiful countries. But all of those countries had one thing in common. Human bodies, human beings invaded other people. And each time when there was a conflict, people attacked each other or people created another war because somebody felt they were more important. Their skin, if you were white, you were more important than when you're black. And when you're black, you were inferior to the yellow, etc., etc., etc. The ridiculous side of that is that is not how they were created. They were all one family. And why is it so hard to discuss nowadays which blood type you are? And when I say you which blood type, I mean which skin color you have. Are you white or are you black? I don't know. I have Chinese blood in me. I have blood from my dad uh, in Europe, Dutch, German, French, whatever. Somewhere famous Venezuela. I don't know. It is what I am and what I do today. That is important. And if you can do that, if you can look at that aspect, not how you look, but what you are on the inside, that determines during those conflicts, the scientific discoveries when mankind came together during the war, the Americans, the Second World War, the Americans came over with Canadians, with the Australians. They brotherly came together. They sacrificed their life. They set us free. And forever I'm grateful for those people that came over. When I met the first time in 1971, Americans, you know, in the United States, I thank the veterans for the blood, the sacrifices they made. But today, if you hear someone say, oh, I'm from America, you kind of, oh, you? I'm sorry. The whole concept has changed. Why? Because our values have been lowered. And folks, I hate to say it. 
Have your values been lowered? Did you lower your values? Have you come to a point that you don't care about other people? Have you come to a point that it is more important how your hair looks like, what your eyes are, are you that black, blue or white or yellow or brown? Or is it more important? Scientifically, where are we coming from? We came somewhere out of a family. A family that had all kinds of colors in the rainbow. They were brothers. And as brothers, we can climb the mountain together. Because if you were slipping, I pulled you up. And if I was slipping, you pulled me up. Because together, we were fighting that mountain. We're not fighting each other. That's how my wife and I have been trained. Actually, I should tell you, it's a joke, I know. But somebody asked me once, they said, have you ever considered divorce? I said, man, I wouldn't even dare thinking about it. It took her 40 years to train me. I don't want to be trained again. That's just a joke, because my wife and I are partners. But reality is, we trained, we got trained, because we went together through it. And we learned together to trust each other, to stand on the Word of God. And no matter the mountains we face, we can survive. As a matter of fact, we can have victory because tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye for now.